Hey everyone and welcome back to my Legion class review series where I level every class up to 110, I gear them all up and I try out every spec and share my thoughts and perspectives with you. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Rogue, one of the many classes that did receive a pretty broad overhaul in a few areas with Legion to see how they fare and uh, what they're like to play now. Normally I do this spec by spec, but first I want to talk about rogue bullshit. And you know what I mean, Cloak of Shadows, Shadow Step, Vanish, Faint and more, rogues have some of the most amazing utility in the game. As a rogue there are so many mechanics that you can kind of cheese or at least use your abilities uh, cleverly against. After playing a rogue for a while you really do end up missing the wide variety of get out of jail free cards that the rogues have, and it's always nice as a rogue knowing you have this large utility toolkit and that really you can differentiate yourself from other players not only in terms of your damage taken and damage dealt, but also in terms of how well you can use your other abilities to help out the team. And I especially miss the movement offered by Shadow Step when I'm on other classes, and playing the rogue after a death knight, well that was quite the change indeed. But anyway, onwards to the specs. So Assassination is the poison and bleed based spec that currently is performing pretty well and it seems to be one of the more popular rogue picks. It manages to bring a number of really strong gameplay elements together, so you've got variable resource regeneration, you've got dots and bleeds and then overall a very fast pace which comes together to make a spec that feels very easy to pick up but they've actually managed to make it so that there's quite a lot going on underneath the surface. Okay, time for the gameplay brief of the Assassination Rogue. This is a pretty cool spec in that one of the things I really appreciate about it is how it's very, very easy to get into, but then has a lot of great depths and mechanics that can be mastered once you're used to the basic stuff. So let's just um, run in and we've got Garot as our first ability I'll use. This is a really strong bleed. Now, that being a bleed is really important because of things like, say, uh, Venomous Wounds, which causes me to regain 10 energy anytime my abilities do bleed damage to a poisoned target. You probably heard Poison. Well, I have Deadly Poison, which um, basically you just always want to have this applied, but you have an application chance each time you attack an enemy to um, apply this Deadly Poison. Anyway, so that's Garot. Now... Uh, we then, because I have all these combo points, I'd be spending them to maintain Rupture, which is just a really big, powerful bleed. Once again, playing into Venomous Wounds. Now, our main generators mutilate, 55 energy, awards 2 combo points. But as you can see, I have pretty extreme regeneration of my combo points because of Venomous Wounds. And then we have Envenom, which is 35 energy, 1 through 5 combo points, does a bunch of instant damage, which is fine. But more importantly, for the next 5 seconds, it's... Um, or up to the next 6 seconds, I believe, will increase your poison application chance by 30%. So, really, the gameplay over all of this is a few different things. Number one, you want to ensure that Garot is maintained. You also want to uh, ensure that Rupture is maintained. You want to remember to apply deadly poison to your weapon beforehand, and then you want to ensure that you have lots of envenoms being used, but you don't want to use them back to back. You want to ensure you're optimizing for uptime of their up to six second buff that they give your character, so there's times when you're pulling resources to, um, you know, use them properly so that you best, you know, essentially use how all of these different poisons and bleeds, etc. work and operate with each other. Now, on top of that, there are more in-depth poison-based mechanics with this spec, and the nice thing about them is you don't really really need to know about them when you're getting started, but they do give you more depth once you are trying to master it. A really good example of this is Surge of Toxins. Finishing moves increase poison damage uh, that you deal to the target by 10% for 5 seconds, so you know there will be times where you'll want to ensure you're getting very good uptime of this. So that's Surge of Toxins. Um, there's you know other stuff when it comes to our talents. Venom Rush, further doubles down on ven uh, Venomous Wounds as a mechanic for this class. We've got Toxic Blade, stab your enemy with a Toxic Poison Blade, dealing a bunch of nature damage, but more importantly, it means the damage of your poisons against the target is increased by 35% for 9 seconds. Now you'll want to optimally use that in and around something like um, Kingsbane, which is your artifact weapon, or artifact weapon ability. Overall, though, you get what I mean. There's quite a lot of stuff going on here. Now, there's also some DPS snapshotting that you can do. So, if I use Vanish, I will now be in stealth, and I'm under the effects of Night Stalker, which causes my abilities to deal 50% more damage while in stealth. So, if I was to, say, initiate a fight with a um, Night Stalker Garot, that would be a 50% uh, bonus damage on a bleed, which already does very heavy damage indeed. 
And, uh, yeah, that's that's really all that I want to cover for the gameplay brief. There is more going on here and more to understand with the poison mechanics, but I think this gives you a pretty decent overview of how it uh, feels to play. So overall, I've really been enjoying my time with this spec. What I mainly like is the gameplay in juggling the various different timings of things and the variability in the gameplay's pace that's offered by stuff like, um, you know, like good venom management and multi-dotting and things like that. I think this is a really fantastic example of Blizzard designing a spec that caters both to newer players and also to experienced players. It gives you a decent amount of mileage to actually grow into the spec. And overall, I just think it's a really solid, strong, pretty fun to play spec that would almost be my default rogue recommendation. So next we move on to subtlety and this is an interesting one. It is one of the harder to play specs for sure and I actually think it's really quite punishing to newer players but that said I found it to be extremely satisfying and fun to play. Its mechanics feel really unique to the spec and the general theme is just really well executed in my view. That said, it is a departure from what Sub used to be like before Legion, so some players probably did get left behind in that transition, but before we really talk about anything, we need to cover the gameplay, so let's get into that. And I really do want to try to keep this one brief, even though it's going to be hard because there's a hell of a lot going on with how this spec plays. So first of all, let's just run in and cover the very basics. Okay, we've got Backstab. This will generate a combo point. Pretty vanilla, pretty simple. You roughly understand what's going on there. We've got Nightblade, which at the face of it looks like your typical, you know, rogue debuff, whatever, but you deal 15% increased damage to enemies affected by it, so managing it is therefore extremely important. It also has the effect of causing your next Nightblade to do 24% increased damage, so it's important to actually manage that and use it properly. So that's what's going on with Nightblade. Then we have Eviscerate, um, which is just your typical big burst of damage. Now, you've probably noticed I've been generating combo points. I haven't actually used a generator. That is because of Shadow Techniques, which means my auto attacks have a chance to generate a combo point. You're also going to notice uh, something strange with Relentless Strikes. So my finishing moves generate six energy per combo point spent. So if I go and use Eviscerate here, you'll notice something interesting happens with my energy bar, <laughs> which is definitely one of the more unique things going on here. Now, I do need to drop out of combat for a second so I can head into stealth. And do pardon my rather messy UI at the minute. Um, yeah, so we got Shadow Strike when I'm in stealth. 40 energy, generates two combo points. Um, very powerful ability. I can only use it in stealth, though. Now, this is where Shadow Dance comes in, and the playing of the Shadow Dance and, you know, darting between, the, you know, the shadows and out of the shadows is like the whole core fantasy of this spec, and it's what it's built around. So Shadow Dance is a one-minute recharge. It gives you the combat effects of being in stealth for four seconds. Due to my talents, it also increases movement speed by 20% and damage dealt by 12%. And that is due to Night Stalker, but on top of that, I'm also using Dark Shadow, which means while Shadow Dance is active, all damage I deal is increased by 30%. Now, that can also be, and often is ideally, comboed with Symbols of Death, which is a 30-second cooldown that increases my damage done by 15% for 10 seconds. Ideally, you always want to kind of have these two lined up together. Um, so there's like, you know, 15% from this, 30% from this, 12% from Night Stalker, then you're going to have 15% from your Nightblade. The amount of, like damage combos and stuff that you can overlap that are going on here is is quite intense but the thing about this spec is that it requires a very very strong management of your resources to really get the most out of this it's got brilliant you know brilliant burst brilliant all that but the management of your resources is a little bit more involved in this which is why I think it's both challenging spec to play in comparison to a lot of other ones especially the other rogue specs but it's also a very fun and rewarding one to play now, there are two things I want to mention just before I go into combat. First of all, Anticipation will give me a maximum of 10 combo points, um, which is up from the 6 that I currently have due to Deeper Stratagem. Deeper Stratagem is the ideal one to play with for throughput, but Anticipation is kind of like an easy mode when you're getting used to the spec. I'm also using Master of Shadows when Death from Above is the ideal one to use for throughput with current gear. However, with Death from Above, um, I, I feel like I need to just have more time in this spec. But uh, yeah, that's just a few notes on the talents, and generally there is a good mix of talents here. The last thing before I jump into the combat is it's worth mentioning Deepening Shadows. My finishing remove, uh, moves will reduce the remaining cooldown of Shadow Dance by 1.5 seconds per combo point spent. So basically, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to apply a Nightblade, and then we're going to do a sort of one iteration of a Shadow Dance. So I apply that, we're just going to go right into Shadow Dance. I 
you know, that wasn't really ideal in terms of how I used it, but anyway, it shows you what Shadow Dance does. So it flips my main action bar over to my stealth action bar, therefore allowing me to use stealth stuff. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of what's going on there. Due to deepening shadows, we're already pretty much able to use a Shadow Dance again. Um, so, yeah, for the sake of demo, I'll just do that now. So, there you go, we're doing a Shadow Dance, and I, like, that really is the core of how to play this. But the reality of the situation is that doing all of this right in a live scenario is, you know, something that does require a fair bit of effort, essentially. Okay, so as you can see, there is a lot to manage here, and overall, a very high APM requirement. This definitely is not a spec for those with stiff fingers, that's for sure. Very much a spec that, in terms of its real-world use, is better suited to the higher percentile of players insofar as skill goes, um, I think using this spec to its uh, full potential in a raid environment is a decently complex endeavor. You are rewarded, though, with really fun gameplay mechanics. Uh, the general pace of entering and exiting Shadow Dance combined with lining up your various different buffs, uh, buffs and effects and your energy generation means that there's just never a dull moment with the sub rogue. Also, their burst potential is just insane. In certain fights, you're able to pull up your resources, well, really your shadow dances, so that you can cram it all into an incredible just amount of damage in, uh, you know, like in one window of time, which is great, you know, great in some specific cases, depending on the fight in question. Um, I'm still trying to play this spec correctly, though. Um, I ended up giving up and kind of playing with the anticipation talent because I felt like I was just, I needed a little bit more breathing room with my combo point management, um, especially because that would be cutting down the chances of me messing up, say, a Shadow Dance timing, at least until I'm a bit more used to it. But still, my opinion of this spec is really positive and strong overall. It's just with the reservation that you'll need to put a lot of effort into just, yeah, into it in general to really get the same results that other specs will achieve with less effort because most of the specs are decently balanced, but some are just easier to play. That said, a sub does seem to be performing very well at the minute. So finally, we have the Outlaw Rogue. It really is amazing how a single ability can change a spec. Outlaw is essentially a rebrand of the Combat Rogue, but with the inclusion of Roll the Bones that really just turns the gameplay that we knew from past expansions on its head. Past that ability, it is quite a simple and accessible spec that, unlike Assassination, focuses on doing direct physical damage rather than relying on bleeds and poisons. But anyway, let's first check out how it plays. Of course, this is meant to be a guide. This is meant to quickly get you up to speed with the very basics of how this spec operates. So here I am on the Outlaw Rogue. Now, the Outlaw is essentially a rebranding of the Combat Rogue from past expansions, but with a number of key differences uh, that are mainly focused around this ability called Roll the Bones. So we've got Saber Slash, costs 50 energy. Of course, we're using energy just like any Rogue energy and combo points, where you attack your target and it's got a chance to proc a free Pistol Shot. Now, Pistol Shot will give you one combo point. Now, you can talent it so that it's generating more combo points, but essentially the two of these are your bread and butter combo point generation. You then burn off your combo points using Run Through, which um, is basically like Eviscerate, and then we have Roll the Bones. Now, Roll the Bones is essentially gives you a random number of buffs. Normally, it's one or two buffs. It can go insane and give you all of the buffs, in which case, you're, you know, your character's crazy powerful. Um, it gives you those buffs for a period of time. Now, this is an ability that has been really the subject of great change throughout this expansion and the beta testing process. What they've ended up doing overall is making the most powerful buff, True Bearing, which was basically kind of like a mini Convergence of Fate. They've made that uh, and the other super powerful ones a little bit less powerful and then made the other ones a little bit more powerful such that they were a little bit more homogenized together with their overall throughput and they've continued to do that with patch 7.2 Point five. With one pretty big difference, though, we do have loaded dice, which they added. This causes Adrenaline Rush, which is just one of your main DPS cooldowns, to cause your next roll the bones to give you at least two matches, which means at least two buffs. Anyway, let's just go in and um, attack some stuff. Okay, so here we go. I'm attacking, right? When I'm using uh, Saber Slash, we just proc a free pistol shot. I use that. We're now at full um, combo points, so we're going to use roll the bones. Now, if you look up um, here, I got broadsides. My UI is a little bit messy at the minute. 
So there's one example with us getting broadsides. If I use it again, this time we got broadsides and shark infested waters, which increases my crit chance by 25%. Um, so you can see these really do sort of change up a little bit of the pace of the gameplay. Um, now what I'm going to do is just roll the bones a few more times. Well, here's another good example of one buried treasure increases energy regen by 30%. Um, and overall, what happens with these is they introduce variability in the pace of the specs gameplay, and that means that it does give you stuff to react to. All of that said, this really is a pretty simple spec to play, in my opinion. You just need some decent weak auras to track the various buffs, and you need to understand the current best decision making regarding um, roll the bones. But other than that, you know, right now for me, you're hitting one, two, three, and four, and then using your um, your cooldowns correctly. Okay, so as I touched on in the gameplay a bit. RNG is something that this spec really embraces. It goes far further than most specs with RNG, which, you know, in most specs, RNG is just like an echo of the elements proc, but here, the gameplay is fundamentally changed by how the RNG works, and one of the upshots of that is you do lose the ability to plan ahead for special situations in a fight because you can't control what roll the bones really gives you that much past loaded dice which i think is a fantastic addition that brings a lot more control back so it's definitely welcome but those lingering concerns still do exist overall i do like this in small bursts so maybe if i'm doing world content but with a raid boss, I don't find it works out that well for me. As much as it is fun when the dice rolls in your favor, for me, it is outweighed by um, the bad RNG. It also struggles with the fun involved in each one of the buffs. Some of the buffs have really strong perceptible effects on how the spec plays, while others are just less fun. And this often does lead to some uneven gameplay pacing, and the spec feels a bit bare um, with one or two of those buffs being active. Now that said, having true bearing is really, really fun. Uh, it's the core of what makes this spec fun for me. It makes this like really aggressive playstyle where you're always trying to burn your combo points as much as you can so you can generate and um, you know regenerate your cooldowns and uh, now this is all doubly so with loaded uh, dice i think that was a fantastic move in blizzard's part overall though i think this is a kind of divisive spec it's got really pronounced strengths and also really pronounced weaknesses so it's pretty much marmite and i think after describing roll the bones your opinion on it will probably dictate whether you enjoy this or not so overall, I do think rogues find themselves in a great spot. There is a lot of diversity between each one of the specs, and each one of them is trying to do something different as far as the gameplay goes, and I think they all pretty much do succeed in what they're doing. It's more a case of do you like what they're doing? And now that said, it is a pure DPS class, so many people will feel pressure just to play the highest performing spec of the day. And if that spec isn't something that you enjoy playing, then you might have a bit of a problem, but again, that does depend on how you play World of Warcraft. Unless a spec is truly at the bottom of the barrel, like most groups won't mind as long as you can produce good results with it. So here, you know, we have core types of gameplay that I think are all very strong combined with excellent utility across the specs. This combines to make a very fun and powerful feeling class where you really do feel like you just have a response to most of what the game throws at you. So overall, I really do like the rogues. There are one or two things like say the RNG and outlaw that I don't like, but I actually did a poll of uh, the rogues that follow me on Twitter, and it turned out, yeah, Outlaw and Assassination were the most popular two. I actually thought that Sub and Assassination would have been the most popular two ones, so perhaps my thoughts on Outlaw are a little bit more um, on the niche end of things, with it not always working out for me. But anyway, there are my thoughts on the rogue. I think it is pretty much worth picking up. There's probably one of those specs there that will actually fit your playstyle. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this video, and a double thank you to everyone on Patreon. Their support has let me bring an editor on, which has really helped making more in-depth series like these, and the lore videos actually happen. But that's it for me, guys, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.